<laughs> and uh, subscribers. I had 500. Thank you. Thank you all. Julie Eisenhower's favorite stories for children. But you know what? Maybe you all enjoy this. The story is The Lost Bag of Gold. An old tale retold by Blanche Dearborn. Now the widow was poor, and to make a living she took in sewing and kept a tiny garden. But although she was careful, never for one minute was she worried about the future. For safely hidden away, in a place that was not even her daughters knew, was a bag of gold. Once a week, regularly, on a Sunday night, after the widow's daughters were in bed and asleep, she went to the old brick oven that was no longer used. Reaching in her hand on the right side, she removed the middle brick and touched the cloth bag, nubbly with coins. But one Sunday, on a night of the darkening moon, with wind whistling down the chimney like a cry of a banshee, the widow had a dreadful surprise. She removed the brick, as usual, and put her hand into the hole, but her fingers clutched on the air. Wurra, wurra, said the widow. My bag of gold is gone, and there is but one person who could have taken it, the old woman who lives at the top of the mountain. Her eyes can see through a stone wall and count the ants on the other side. She moaned so long and so loud that she woke her three daughters. When they heard the sad tale, they all sat down in a row and began to moan. And they moaned so loud that they woke up their next-door neighbor, who happened to be the wise woman of the town. And being as kind and as she was wise, she came over to the cottage to see if she could be of help. In a moment, she had a plan worked out and held up her finger for silence so that she might explain her idea in peace and quiet. Coincidence, she said. But it is only this morning that good fellow, the little brown elf who lives on the side of the mountain, told me that the old woman is in need of a girl to do her work. And luckily, the old woman has never laid eyes on these three girls. Now... If one of them was to go and apply for the job, she might be able to find the gold and bring it back to you. What good would it do to regain the gold, said the widow? The old woman would only come and take it again, now that she knows I have it. Hide it from her, I cannot. Tis true enough that you cannot hide anything from her said the wise woman. But when you say she would come and take the gold again, you are mistaken. For the old woman, like all living creatures, has certain rules she must obey, and one of them is, she cannot steal the same thing twice. So, if one of your three daughters is smart enough to get a job with the old woman, find out where the gold is hidden, and then make away with it, never stopping till it's back in its old hiding place, then your treasure is safe. So the next morning, Nora, dressed in clean, neat clothes, set out. The girl made her way to the top of the mountain and found the old woman's home. It was a long, hard climb, for there was no road and the way was steep. It was nearly nighttime before Nora reached the house. As she took the steps, she could hear her heart beating under her ribs. Trip, 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 trip. And her hand shook as she knocked at the door. Almost in an instant. The door was thrown open, and there stood the old woman. She was dressed in a long cape, and her silvery hair reached down to her waist. What do you want? she asked. I am a poor girl, said Nora. I have heard that you need help, and I should like the job. The old woman peered at the girl with keen eyes. You look like a strong, likely girl, she said. Come in. As it was already nightfall, the old woman gave Nora a crust of bread for her supper, and then she showed her a straw pallet to sleep on under the attic eaves. In the morning, the old woman called her before the sun was up, and Nora saw that her job would not be easy. She was to do the washing and ironing, the cleaning and dusting, 
and the dusting was the hardest of all, for the old woman could see a speck of dust 500 feet away. <laughs> you were to dust everything, she said, except the mirror that belonged to my great-great-grandmother, who was a witch, and she put a curse on anybody who but me might touch it. <laughs> Aha, thought Nora, who didn't believe in curses. That is where the money is hidden, behind the looking glass. After dinner, the old woman gave Nora a golden comb. You are to comb my hair now until I tell you to stop, she said. Then the old woman sat down in front of the looking glass and Nora began combing her hair. The old woman was sound asleep. Then Nora, quick as a flash, mounted a chair and fell behind the looking glass. Sure enough, there was her mother's bag of gold. A second later, Nora was dashing down the road with the gold under her arm. She hadn't gone far before she came to a bake shop. From its interior came the piping hot voices of four loaves of bread. Pull us out, cried the loaves. Pull us out or we shall burn. I haven't time to stop for you, said Nora. She hurried on. Soon she came to an apple tree, laden so heavily with apples that its branches almost touched the ground. Shake me, cried the tree. Shake me before my branches break. I haven't any time for you, said Nora, and she hurried off. She had gone no great distance before she came to a white horse with a coat full of burrs. Brush me, cried the horse. The burrs are pricking me so I can neither sleep nor eat. I haven't time to bother with you, Nora said, and she hurried on her way. Before long, back at the top of the mountain, the old woman awoke. When she saw the chair in front of the looking glass and the girl nowhere to be found, she knew at once what had happened. Putting on her shoes that could make her, her go twice as fast as the ordinary person, she started on in pursuit. She had gone no great distance before she, too, came to the bake shop. Have you seen a girl with a bag under her arm? She asked the bread. To be sure, she went right past here and turned to the right. Soon the old woman came to the apple tree. Did you see a girl by this way with a bag under her arm? She asked. Yes, I did. She went straight ahead, said the apple tree. Hurrying on, the old woman came to a horse. Have you seen a girl with a bag under her arm? She asked. Just over the hill, said the horse. She can't be far away. And the horse was right. A few yards more, and the old woman found Nora resting, sitting on a stone. Taking the money bag, the old woman gave Nora a sharp cuff on each ear and sent her home crying. The next day, Dora begged for a chance at getting back the money. And with her mother's permission, she started out in the morning and arrived at night just as her sister had. But finally, the old woman said, Come in. Dust everything in the house but the mirror, she said. But beware of that, for there is a curse on it. Whoever touches it but me shall drop dead. She thought, by putting such a dreadful curse on it, that Dora would not dare go near. Dora took the comb and began to comb the old woman's hair. She combed it and combed it and combed it. By and by, the old woman was asleep, and, just as Nora had, Dora mounted the chair, took the bag of gold from behind the mirror, and was away. And everything happened to her as it had her sister. At the bake shop, the bread called out, Pull us out! Pull us out, or we'll burn. But Dora, knowing how fast the old woman could go, cried over her shoulder as she hurried by. I have no time to bother with you. The apple tree cried, Shake me before my branches break. But Dora didn't even have the time to answer. When she came to the horse, it cried out, Brush me, brush me, for the birds give me no ease. But Dora hurried by, without even turning her head. As on the day before, the old woman woke up and putting her ma on her magic shoes, was away and after door. When she came to the bake shop and asked the bread, Have you seen the girl go this way with a bag under her arm? The loaves answered to the right. And the old woman's next question, the apple tree pointed straight ahead. The horse didn't even wait to be asked, but said, Use your eyes and you shall see her. She is scarcely out of sight. Soon the old woman came upon door resting on the haycock. Taking the money bag, the old woman gave the girl two hard cuffs on each ear and sent her home a weeping. That night there was a great sorrow in the cottage. Flora asked to be allowed to try her luck, but because of much begging and beseeching, the widow let the youngest daughter 
by her luck. <laughs> However, she had no hopes of the girl's success and sat and mourned all day. My money is gone. I shall never have it back, alas, alas. Because Flora had gotten up earlier than her sisters and walked without resting, she came to the old woman's house in the middle of the afternoon. After two unhappy experiences, the old woman was very suspicious and looked long and hard upon Flora. Are you an honest girl? she asked. Flora looked at her with eyes that opened wide. From my earliest days, she said, my mother always taught me to never take anything that was not my own. Then the old woman sat down on the low stool before the mirror. Do you see that looking glass on the wall? She asked Flora. Oh yes, said Flora. It's very handsome indeed. And there's a handsome curse on it. Put there by my great-great-grandmother, who was a witch. Whoever, except myself, touches the mirror shall lose her eyesight, her hearing, her voice, forever. After, she shall roam the world without a friend or a home. There, said the old woman to herself, I guess that threat will scare her. Although Flora didn't believe in curses, the old woman's words sounded so terrible that the poor girl turned white and began to shake in her boots, all of which the old woman noticed with pleasure. Handing her comb to the girl, she said, Comb my hair now. Comb it long and well. Flora did as she was bidden. She combed the old woman's hair, and she combed it and combed it. By and by, she saw that the old woman was asleep. But Flora didn't stop then, for she knew the old woman was only in her first sleep. Flora kept on combing and combing until the old woman was so sound asleep and snored so loudly that all the windows rattled. Then, and not until then, did Flora climb on the chair, seize the bag of gold from behind it, the looking glass, and run off with it. She hadn't gone far when, as had happened to her sisters, the bread in the oven called out, Pull us out! Pull us out before we burn! At once Flora stopped and pulled out the bread, neatly covering it with a cloth. Then she hurried a little faster, then to make up for lost time. Soon she came to the apple tree, which cried out, Shake my branches before they break. Flora knew the old woman would soon be on her track, but she could not bear to see the apple tree in such distress. So she stopped and shook the branches and heaped the apples into a neat pile. Then she hurried on, hopeful. She could make up for lost time, but knowing full well that the old woman would soon be after her, in no great time she came to the white horse. Brush me, brush me, the horse called out, for the burrs gave me no rest. Flora gave a great sigh, but she couldn't bear to see any animal in pain, so taking a brush she worked on the horse until every burr was gone. Thank you, cried the horse. Now get on my back and we will see if the old woman, even with her magic shoes, can catch me. After a much longer sleep than usual, the old woman woke up. Her first thought was the, for the bag of gold behind the looking glass. At once, she saw it was gone. Oh well, said the old woman. I won't be very long at catching up with her. Soon the old woman came to the bread, all covered so neatly with a snowy white cloth. Good bread, she cried. Have you seen a girl with a bag under her arm? Let me see said one of the loaves, speaking from under the snowy white cloth. Did she go to the left, or did she go to the right? Now let me think. Which way could it have been? All the while the bread delayed. Time was fleeting by. After a minute or two, the old woman saw she was getting no information from the bread, so she hurried off in a great hop. By and by she came to the apple tree. Apple tree, apple tree. She cried. Did you see a young lass carrying a bag under her arm? The apple tree stretched its limbs. Now that it felt so light and free, it says, spoke, Ah, uh, go to the left, or go to the right. You'll you'll not be finding her this night. These words of the apple tree, the old woman left in a terrible tizzy and leapt down the path which the other girls had taken, with great leaps of bounds. But even by leaping as far as she was able, or bounding as high as she could, she never found a sign of Flora. Quicksilver carried Flora and the bag of gold safely home. Thus the widow got back her money, and she and her three daughters lived happily in the cottage at the foot of the mountain, until each of the daughters got married. But the widow stayed in, on in her little house, with a cat and a parrot, and lived to a happy old age. Thank you for listening.